and welcome to Coffee and the World. In the time it takes to make my espresso, I'll get you up to speed on those global matters that matter, but you probably haven't thought much about. In case you haven't figured it out, I'm Italian, and we like our coffee in concentrated small doses and from the mocha, obviously the only right way to make your coffee. But it's not just the right way to make coffee, it's also doing right by the environment, because you don't have to use these things. You might wonder, don't these capsules just get recycled? Well, yes and no. These coffee capsules and much of what we throw out every day is part of a huge business globally. But that is not as sustainable as it seems. This is how it works. My recycling gets picked up here in Milan. Some of it goes to a closed processing plant, but a lot of it leaves on a ship bound for, drum roll, China. When the shipping containers arrive at their destination, swarms of Chinese mom and pop buyers, as well as larger companies, buy the trash and transform it into raw materials. Those materials then get sold to manufacturers to produce new products, say, a new coffee capsule. And then, that coffee capsule is shipped right back to Milan again, and the circle goes on and on. I know what you're thinking, it seems like the West is just stamping its trash in China. But in reality, this trashy business was for a long time embraced by both the importer and exporter alike. For countries like the EU, it was simpler and cheaper to export their scrap abroad because the cost of processing it at home was much higher. And for China, that recycled stuff from abroad was often of higher quality and was especially needed to feed its booming manufacturing. This is why since the 1990s, China has grown to command nearly half the global market share in recycled plastic and paper imports. And the domestic market for trash was so good that it even minted the first Chinese female billionaire who was crowned the trash queen. Yet, what seemed like a perfect arrangement wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. And everything changed when China launched its National Sword Campaign in 2017, which banned all foreign waste imports in a single year. This move may have shocked some, but there were signs pointing to this outcome. First, the trash trade was taking an environmental toll. Roughly 30% of the waste that arrived in China from the US in 2016 wasn't actually recyclable, mostly because it was contaminated and unusual. And an estimated 1.5 million metric tons of plastic, the equivalent of 150 Eiffel Towers, ended up off China's coast each year. Second, importing trash became less necessary as Chinese consumers were getting richer, thus generating more of their own trash. So, now that the music has stopped in China, who was going to take these boatloads of trash? Southeast Asia, it turned out. Between 2016 and 2018, plastic exports to that region skyrocketed, but with much less capacity than China to process trash, countries like Malaysia and Vietnam landfilled or dumped in open air 70% of that waste. And, unsurprisingly, they soon decided to shut the door on imported trash, too. If nothing else, China's ban has shined a light on the irony that has long underpinned the recycling industry. What was supposed to be a sustainable practice was, in practice, held together by an unsustainable system. And demand for developed countries' waste may never return to its sites. So now what? Well, we must take care of our own trash now, of course, but how? Policies can help, like the EU's abolition of single-use plastic and its circular economy action plan. But investing in domestic capacity will be even more crucial. The trash trade with China was taken so much for granted that when the country brought down the sword in 2017, 60 US cities had to stop their recycling programs because they simply couldn't keep up with the new volumes of waste. The good news is that investing in waste management won't be a wasted investment. The US recycling industry generated $110 billion in 2018, about the same as the global entertainment industry's revenues. Obviously, it's not as glitzy as Hollywood, but the incentives are there to incentivize the sustainability of this industry. And given the impact it has on our lives, I think we also have an individual role to play too. Just like in recent years, many have become more conscious consumers, wanting to know where stuff comes from, now 
we also have a chance to become more conscious wasters, thinking about where stuff ends up. And the coffee you have today isn't a bad place to start. Also, I think mine might be ready. Until next time on Espresso Shots and buona giornata.